Richard was one of the outstanding young commanders within the Rifles. Um, in a huge position of responsibility for one so young. Um, he was a rising star of the Rifles, clearly destined for the top, had done so much in his uh, short career um, and, and had risen so quickly. Um, he really was the ultimate professional and a young man who the other young riflemen looked to uh, and was an inspiration uh, for the other, the other riflemen. He, was, he really was well respected and I would go as far as say loved by his, his fellow riflemen um, and you know, really I would suspect that his thoughts are, are still out with the, the guys still out in Afghanistan, the rest of his platoon, um, but I'm sure he'd be very proud to know so many people have turned out for him today um, and a real outpouring of um, pride I would suppose in Richard's life rather than grief for his uh, life today. When he was young, Rich was the type of boy who always fell off his bike and always fell downstairs. He was the boy who, when we saw a shooting star on Christmas Eve when he was about six, believed for years that it was Father Christmas speeding around the world. He was the boy who always ate with his fingers and smothered everything in sauce. And he was the boy who loved eating ham rolls while watching the Mighty Ducks, Teen Wolf or Drop Dead Fred. He was the boy who was never top of the class. But he was also the boy who always had a conscience and the boy who made everyone laugh. And he was the boy who loved heroic tales of soldiers of old and trips to the Imperial War Museum. And that boy became the man who was determined to make something of his life, determined to make a difference somewhere, somehow. So he became the man who joined the Royal Gloucester, Berkshire and Wiltshire Regiment as soon as he left school. And he became the man who saw himself as one in a long line of soldiers through history and always honoured their memory as we will honour his. And he was the man who truly loved his boyhood friends Snowy and Tate and his band of brothers in Wrecking Platoon. He was the man who told me he was a legend and when I asked him what did that make me, he said, well Ted, you're the father of a legend of course. And he was the man whose life was defined by being a soldier, telling Dan less than three weeks before he died that if anything happens to me, know that I have lived life to the full, have no regrets and love my job. That was my son and we are so proud of him. He was such a big part of our lives even when he wasn't at home that we are all going to miss him like crazy, but his spirit lives on. Like him we all believe in fate. He used to say what will be will be and that becoming a casualty was just wrong time wrong place, a case of plain bad luck and I guess his luck ran out. He would never, ever, ever want us to mourn his death. Well, maybe just a bit. But rather we should celebrate his mad action-packed life. He always reckoned that he'd lived at least two lifetimes in his 23 years anyway, with what he'd seen, where he'd been and what he'd done. And of course he would love all this and the fact that he's been rightly honoured, will be forever young and has his own place in that long line of heroic soldiers, his own place in history. Buddy, I'm proud to say that now you are that legend, you told me you were, and you always will be.